Evan from Evan 2 HD, and we're back to show you another cool reptile with our friend Brian from Animal Bites TV. What do you have for us today, Brian? What we have here is what they call a leopard gecko, which is obviously a lizard, right? Okay, but let me tell you a few things about this leopard gecko. First, it's what they call an albino one, which basically just means that it's lacking some pigment, and that's why it looks kind of yellow. What do you think that this particular leopard gecko's name would be good to, to name it? Shane. Shane? Okay, I like that name. From now on, it'll be named Shane. As a matter of fact, it is a boy, so you picked a good name. So what's neat about these guys is they come from the deserts of Pakistan, all right? And you can kind of see that they're really kind of ground dwellers. You know, these guys don't climb a whole lot or anything like that. Although they do have nice claws, but they won't hurt you or anything like that. And what's neat, look at that tongue. Isn't that thing cool? You could probably lick your nose. <laughs> but believe it or not, this tongue can lick its own eyeballs. And what it is, is that when little dust from the sand gets in its eyes, it can actually lick its eyeballs out. That's pretty cool, huh? Where do leopard geckos live out in the wild? You're gonna find these in rocks in little areas in the cliffs that are, are have little concaves, and they're gonna run all the way. But they're also what they call nocturnal, okay? Do you guys know what nocturnal means? Yeah, sleep through the day. Exactly, sleep through the day, and they stay awake all night. And you know, you can usually tell a nocturnal animal, because can you see its eyes, it's barely yeah. open, but see how it's got a little slit in the eye instead of a round pupil? That means that it can see good at night. Because again, these guys are going to... Winky! His eyes are closed. His eyes are closed. I know. Well, you know, this is what they call an albino, and that's actually why he's closing his eyes, is because a lot of times the eyes are a little more sensitive because it's the red instead of black, and the light actually is causing it to kind of be a little sensitive, so it's closing its eyes because it doesn't like the light. And even the natural form don't like light that much either, and that's why they stay hidden away almost all day long and then run around all night chasing after little bugs and stuff like that. And again, they're gonna crawl up to them and they're just gonna crush those little bugs. Now these guys do need some calcium and stuff like that to survive, but little Shane here is almost a year old now and this is as big as it gets. And Shane is gonna live probably close to 20 years. What kind of defense mechanisms do leopard geckos have? Well, believe it or not, when a predator or something comes up and wants to eat it, it's going to start to run away, and if that predator grabs its tail, guess what's going to happen? Fall off. Its tail is going to fall off, that's right. So if, a, let's say, an animal comes up, grabs it, tail comes off, and then it's going to run away and it's going to survive. And the thing that's neat is that Shane can grow this tail back. Now it's never going to look exactly the same as this tail here. It'll look a little bit less ridgy and it'll look a little weird, and it takes about two or three months for a tail to completely grow back. But these guys are actually insectivores, so they're gonna eat basically all kinds of different bugs. Mealworms, crickets, roaches, all kinds of different things. And he's a cute little bugger, isn't he? Cool. And these guys are probably one of the easiest pet lizards to take care of. You guys want to look at the setup? So the thing that's great about keeping reptiles a lot of times is that they have really similar types of needs. So if you remember, this is just like the bearded dragon setup, the exact same type of thing. We have sand in the bottom, which you can also use different types of substrate as well. And you have a bowl for water and a bowl for the mealworms. Now again, leopard geckos are going to mainly eat mealworms with the occasional cricket every now and then. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the bearded dragon and put some calcium dust on it just to keep them nice and healthy. But besides that, the other thing that leopard geckos love is little hiding spots. So see like little places like this? He's going to go in there and he's going to hang out. Shane is going to love it in there. He's getting a little bit big and hopefully he doesn't get stuck because that would be bad, right? But I think it's big enough for it to show in there. And then we're going to add one more thing that the bearded dragons didn't have and that's this little cave just like this. See? And there's little sphagnum moss in the bottom that you keep that nice and moist because reptiles shed their skin, okay? And sometimes certain reptiles need to be a little bit moist during the shed so they can get all that skin off. And you know what's really cool about Shane? It's kind of gross too, but he eats his own shed. So when he sheds out, he'll actually eat it, believe it or not. I know it's a little gross, I know, but this is going to help. And again, it's going to be just like where he's in the rocks when he's over in the deserts. 
climbs into the little caves just like this. So we're gonna just put this right in the corner over here and Shane is gonna absolutely love it. Again, he's gonna... Yeah, he just climbs up there and he hangs out in there. And it does a couple of things, because remember we talked about him being nocturnal, so he likes to basically sleep all day. So he wants to get out of the light. So we've got to give him a spot where he's nice and comfortable. When he climbs in that hole, he's just going to sleep all day long, and then he's going to come out at night. Now, we can add little things like this. You guys like this little Venus supply trap? Just to make the place look a little bit cooler, kind of a little more decorative. And you can do whatever you want. You can add all kinds of branches and all kinds of neat things. Do leopard geckos need special lighting? And a leopard gecko, like Shane, really doesn't need that UVB light, the stuff that we talked about that's like the sunlight. So basically, instead of having a UVB light, we're going to have a nighttime light and a daytime light. And you can see the red light is going to be at night, and it's really not going to feel light. It's going to still feel dark for him, but it's still going to be giving off heat. And then we have a normal bulb for the daytime. And you basically just switch back and forth. At night, you turn the night red bulb on, and then the day, you turn the other one. And that's gonna keep the temperature nice and warm in there. Again, these guys don't need it as warm as the bearded dragons. Maybe in the mid 80s or so is the perfect temperature for a leopard gecko, with the cool side being like whatever your house is, is perfect. So they're really easy to care for, and you only have to feed them about three times a week, which is really great too. They're super, super easy to care for. And again, they make fantastic pets. What time do they come out at night? Well, usually they're gonna come out of their burrow right when the lights go out. So probably in the winter time, maybe about six or seven o'clock at night. In the summer, they may stay in their burrows a little bit longer. But as soon as it's darker out and you turn that red light on, it's gonna start coming out and wandering around. And during the day, you'll see them wander a little bit, but most of the time it's gonna stay inside of its little hide cave and just kind of chill out. But as soon as you turn that red light on, bam, it's gonna get out there and it's gonna start searching for bugs. Can you reach that one? There you go. Perfect. Oh, look at that. How pretty that is, huh? And again, they don't climb a whole lot, so you know, although these wooden things are going to be cool, and he'll climb on it a little bit, most of the time he's going to stay kind of on the ground because that's where they come from. They kind of come from flat desert areas where there's not a lot of wood and stuff like that. But but still, it looks really cool, and you could see Shane's kind of digging it right now. Either that, or he's saying, "How do I get down from here?" How come you could feed mealworms to leopard geckos and not bearded dragons? So mealworms for this guy is really good because uh, that's you know one of their main food sources, so it works out really well. But for bearded dragons, they actually can't digest the exoskeleton of a mealworm. So when they eat them, they actually throw them up because they can't digest them. But, but for these guys, it's absolutely perfect to feed mealworms. And they're really easy because you can go to your local pet shop and you can buy say a hundred mealworms and put them in there and then you don't have to worry about it for like a whole week. That way you know what's cool about a lot of reptiles and leopard geckos certainly are like this too is if you ever go on vacation you don't have to worry about them at all. You just give them food and your water and you just leave them. It makes it really awesome. Instead of having to bring them along or having a dog sitter or something like that, that's what makes reptiles really cool and leopard geckos certainly fit into that because you could actually put a hundred mealworms in there and then not have to feed them for an entire week. Is it important to keep different species of reptiles in separate enclosures? Yeah, you know, it's always good to kind of keep the species separate. I don't know if they'd fight or not, but they could. And I tell you, bearded dragons in particular are very territorial. In the wild, they actually, as a matter of fact, that's why they call them bearded dragons, is because they have this big black beard as a, as a male. And that's the way they defend their territory. So my feelings are, is that if you ever put a leopard gecko and a bearded dragon together, the bearded dragon may beat up the leopard gecko. Because again, leopard geckos have really soft skin that can, can get injured really quickly, whereas bearded dragons are little, little armored animals. They've got all those spikes and really heavy skin. So if a bearded dragon ever bit a leopard gecko, it would hurt the leopard gecko an awful lot. And these guys aren't mean, so they really don't fight very often. So that's it guys, leopard geckos are pretty rad, huh? Another cool video on leopard geckos? Check out this one from Animal Bites TV. Tune in next week to see what other animals we have.